Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and today I wanted to show you guys a walk around the display tank. I've been meaning to do this for a while, and I got a few seconds, so I figured I would do it today. Um, all the rock work in here is live rock, and it has been shaped and molded and chiseled to the perfection the way I, you know, wanted. So this is uh, Aquascape design. This isn't just something that was thrown together. Um, my goal is to eventually replace this live rock with plaster and I'm not really a big fan of live rock anymore. I used to have 400 pounds of live rock in here and this was an SPS dominant tank but over the years I guess I just got bored with all that rock and I wanted places for my fish to swim around and it just seems so much more enjoyable. The fact is before I couldn't have all these tanks there was nowhere for them to really go except for hide behind the rocks. Now they can swim around the open waters and my fish have never been happy. So I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. The only thing is I'm getting a little shadow in the front of my rocks just because of the shape of the tower and the way it's leaning. So I am going to have to fix that one day, maybe with a couple XR15s if I can afford it. But um, so here, here's some of the layout I have. I just recently got big back into SPS. Um, thank you, uh, Jack Klein, the SPS king over here who always talks me into these things. Uh, I do love them. <laughs> but um, during the winter time, I don't ship as much SPS just because it's harder. But um, so anyway, so I removed my LPS, my frog spawns that were up top the rock here. And I uh, put the acros up there and I put the uh, LPS, the uh, frog spawns, the torches and hammers on the outside. I actually glued them to the wall of the tank um, just for fun. Plus as they grow, I can trim them. I didn't want to put anything in this tank that I can't reach. This tank is so deep and it being built into the wall, I'm really stuck if I try to do anything creative and I can't trim the coral. Because one of the things you have to think about is the type of coral you buy, how is it going to grow, what is its requirements. I mean, this Monty is pretty easy to clip off, but I mean those things grow like weeds and they eventually shadow everything in your tank. So Monty is something that has to be regularly trimmed back so it doesn't grow out of hand. All these acro frags up top, that's gonna to take a while. They're um, slow growers compared to the Monty. So anything I put in here, like I said, it's all planned. I wanna keep my sand bed as clean as possible except for those expensive gems. Um, but yeah, so let's show you some more of the rocks. This beauty I love, the fact that we punched a hole through it so the fish can always swim through. It's light on top, but the lower light corals can grow on the bottom without a problem. You can see some more frog spawn and euphilias over on the wall over here. There's a nice super green highlighter, yellow Monty cap. Um, there's a couple other Montes that I put around there just so they can fill in. I do love the Monty caps on the overflows. Uh, you can see that one there. You can see that mystic Monty there. Every once in a while I'll be cleaning and just accidentally knock off a huge chunk, but um, yeah, it happens. So, but yeah, this tank is designed for water flow, for the happiness of the corals, for the fish. Anything I put in here is kind of designed to be safe for the future. Like all these acans can grow around each other on this rock. The mushrooms will stay near the mushrooms. The acros are going to be above with the other acros. I, I have, I'm trying to like keep everything to the point where when it does grow in in the future it's not going to be damaging at all to the other corals. So, there's my chevron, he's picking at something. Let's see if you can see in here. Yep, if you look really close there's a purple reef lobster hidden underneath there. So, let's walk around back in a second and I'll show you guys the back view. But, yeah just check it out, there's a couple balance mushrooms right there. Placement is everything for the success of the coral. You know what's funny is there's this stupid support beam across the tank in black acrylic, and I'm getting a real dark spot. And this is so high to the water that it's really hard to um, light that area. So any corals that I put up top that's high light on this side tend to get shadowed. So I'm gonna have to maybe put something a little bit lower um, lighting on this side. So I did throw some fobbies right there and we'll see how they grow. But everything's like a test. You think you have strong light until the color starts fading on the coral or it's not doing well. And then your only option is to take that coral out and replace it with another coral, something that likes lower light. 
so so faster is doing really well with low light. I just glued a bunch of frags here. So it'll take a couple days for those to actually settle in and grow and get their color. I did just glue them and press them in, which, like I said, it's almost impossible to reach the front of the tank. This is, you know, over 30 inches deep, plus you're reaching across that rock. And that's one of the reasons why I had to take those euphilias out. When those were puffed up, oh my gosh, they would sting my arm every time. I would reach to the front and I would end up with uh, burn marks down my arm from the frog spots at my elbow, the soft skin on the inside. But, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is the display tank. Here's the Gorgonias on the bottom. They're filter feeders, so they're not really, um, they don't need the light. They're not photosynthetic, which is great. So you can always find a coral for a place in your tank, but proper selection and proper location is important. So let's go around back real quick and then uh, we'll continue this tour from there. All right, one of my favorite things about this tank, like I said, is being able to see it from both sides. I love walking around to the back and just being able to see what's happening. It is always interesting. The fish never let me down. There's the top, my acro rock right here. It's so cool. That thing is built like a shelf. I know they're gonna fill in anyway, but at least that'll give shade for corals, for fish, for whoever wants that. So as the tank grows in, it'll be pretty cool to see what happens. So there's some Duncans, there's a Hynophora, all my Favias on this side, can't wait for those to grow in together, they're all different color Favias, um, some Fastrias down here, so there's the Worldwide Corals Bizarro, which is my absolute favorite, Meteor Shower, and there's a couple other down there. So there's a torch, very cool looking torch, there's a clam. Powder blue and purple. Yep. This is my special Favia. This is Coralus um, Nightmare Before Christmas Signature Series Favia. That's one of our favorites. Um, so, there you guys go. Just a quick little update of the tank. Um, always working on something. I don't even have the LEDs on right now because they're almost too powerful that they just blow the camera out and it's hard to even see with those. So I did put on a little sticky filter, this little lens today, but, you know, look at my sea apple. He's walking around. He's like, oh, you're feeding from over here? I'm coming over here. So he walked around from the front of the tank. That's pretty impressive. And then I get my Crown Royal Leather. Always love that thing. And this chalice, I have to move it. It's not getting enough light down here. That thing was red and yellow, unbelievably flamethrower chalice. But this bad lighting down here, of course now my toadstool is growing and it's shadowing it, so that's a bad location for that. That's gonna have to be moved now. Not to mention this lobo could probably sting if it gets too close. So I'm gonna find a new place for that. Um, and also, let's see if, if I can show you guys real quick this, um, see what happens to this filter. Not too bad, but if that lens gets touched with the light, you can see as soon as the light touches that, you lose your... So, anyway, what I wanted to show you guys as I'm dragging on forever, as I always do, this is my hospital tank up here, okay? This is where stuff goes to get protected. Um, there's some awesome chalices up here. But if you look in the center, I don't want to get my camera wet because this is not a waterproof one. But um, there's a rainbow down there. That chalice, I've been nursing it back to health. It was completely, completely dead. The color on it was terrible. So anyway, you can see it down there. That thing is a gem. Rainbow chalice, stunning. I nursed it back from an actual white piece. That thing was so dead, I didn't think it was gonna survive. It was completely bleached out. So another tip, guys, don't throw out your corals as long as it's alive and there's some tissue. It can come back to life. 
you just don't want something that's decaying in your tank. So if it's just washed out, there's a lot of chance that it can come back to life. So, so there you go. All right, I think I'm done for now. As always, thanks for watching and happy reefing. Until next time. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And thank you for being part of the Crow Lust community.